plan B launch site because the weather is the way it is. It's windy and choppy. And he's off. Good morning, day two of the Everglades Challenge. Just leaving Dog Island. Heading down the bay for a Charlotte Harbor crossing. A little downwinder until we get to the end of a Gasparilla Sound. It's not crazy in here, but you can definitely tell there's some gusts. And we'll see what Charlotte Harbor's like. I'm thinking with this wind direction, if I get far enough east before I cross, I'll have kind of a little bit of a downwinder. Won't be perfect, but it's a whole lot better than going straight into it in the slog. But it's definitely warmed up. I think thankfully the sun's out. No more rain today. Once I get across, come up with my plan heading toward, down towards Mount Lachey. And hopefully dry off some stuff. Clothes that I wore yesterday, I didn't switch over to my dry top soon enough. And at that point I was like, ah, just keep going until you start to get a little too wet and then I switched so I'm heading down Gasparilla Sound winds for the most part at my back occasionally you get a stronger gust which I'm sure is nothing compared to what we're gonna see I was thinking about cutting the corner and going through these mangroves to get further east. But if you guys can see that shiny water, that's an oyster bar. And there are no gaps in it. The last gap is about a half mile further north and I'm not going north. I'm going south. Key Largo, baby. So I'm just going to follow this down, follow the shoreline as far east as I can get and then cross over Gasparilla Sound. If I jump all the way straight across, it's only a five mile crossing instead of eight miles. So depending on my speed, that could be an hour, an hour less in the slog, which anytime you can shave that mass off that's good so anyway feeling good day two everglades challenge challenge today is charlotte harbor
down past Pine Island. Hopefully make it down to Benita Beach. Benita Beach! But we'll see. The most important thing is get across Charlotte Harbor safely. And if I wound, I wind up being on the west side of Pine Island. It's not the end of the world. That's what I did last year. It's just super skinny water, a whole lot of poling instead of paddling. So, peace out. Still in Gasparilla Sound. So beautiful down here. These beaches. I think that's protected. But very pretty. And we got dolphins right in front of me having breakfast. I right, got another dolphin off to the side. I think they're coming right at me. So welcome to the Slog Fest, Charlotte Harbor. It's sloppy. I wouldn't say it's horrible yet. Um, I don't know, maybe at one mile into my 10 mile crossing. Started back there. And heading up there, if you can see, I don't know. That's Popelia on the top of Pine Island. And I'm going to the east of Popelia, down Mat Lache Pass, Sound, something. Anyway. I think what's going on and I'm trying to point a little bit further east is that the wind is clocked a little bit more to the north so you got some residual rollers coming from the northeast but the wind is almost right on my shoulder so it's not horrible. Occasionally you got some of these and you just roll with them. And then once the bigger rollers move through, correct a little bit more to the east. So I think my plan, skirting along the shoreline further east is allowing me to hit this pass like I wanted to. So kudos to me on that plan. I don't, I didn't want to go to the west side of Pine Island again, like I did last year. It was so shallow. And with this wind, I don't know if it pushes more water in or out. So anyway. Picked up a little bit. Still feels like it's a little bit more out of the north than northeast. So we'll call it north northeast. 
fun. I'm getting bigger sets. Roll through and sets of three. Some are like right in front of me. That looks special. It's just rolling with them. I'm going. Right down the trough. Like this one's gonna be fun. Grinding it out. Keep my eyes on that marker up there that you probably can't even see on the video. And just keep grinding. Gotta paddle anyway, right? Might as well just keep paddling. It's not like I'm, my goal is Bukelia. My goal is Benita Beach, Dog Beach, or Dog Park Beach, or somewhere in that area, Bowtie Island. One stroke at a time, right Josh? I don't know where Scott is. He was on Dog Island when I left. And I think he left. The tracker didn't update me. He called me and then sent me a text message, which is weird because Scott really doesn't do that. But he's like, are you still on Dog Island? I said, no, I left there at 7.30. So the tracker doesn't update worth a damn but the spot does Julie's been tracking me on the spot so she knows my brother knows it's all good two three three manatees oh this went a baby whoops sorry buddy I didn't want to drift over you <laughs> Yay, more manatees. So this is what the east side of Pine Island looks like. So I pulled up on the map. I am probably about six miles, maybe six and a half miles from Matt Lachey. And as soon as we get around these mangroves, we'll be able to see Matt Lachey, which is awesome. Give me a target. And water's not deep. You got all these little sandbars. And I'm on the inside. And there's just enough water that I can paddle and see really big fish swim by. Holy crap. Anyway, uh, water here is about two and a half feet deep, three feet deep. Um, and so with the wind at my back and the ability to paddle, I'm probably making, I don't know, four miles an hour, a little bit faster if I lean into it. But hope to be at Matt Lachey by 2 30 it's two hours from now um uh, i'm there sooner cool i'm not gonna stay in matt lache i will top up my water and get going so bye dolphins bye dolphins
like I found one of the prettiest islands here. There's the Sanibel Causeway. I right, took a break before running down there. Eat dinner. Get ready for night ops. Wind's picked up a little bit. Check the forecast. See what's up. Welcome to Naples. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Backside of Kiwad and got out of the swell, got out of the wind, and the tide's in my favor. Pushing on to Marco. Beautiful in here. Bye, buddy. This is a little bit of a pickle. stuff like that all over the place.
believe this is Hog Key. Hog Key? Yup. than I can. That's he's in that direction. I had to go that way and then that way. But we're heading straight to that point, which is awesome. Hopefully make it to graveyard campground by dark. And then push into Flamingo tomorrow. Be a short jaunt from there. But apparently the wind's supposed to be the same. Which I don't even know what that is. It's a lot. 15 to 25 gusts, I'm guessing is what they're saying. <sighs> Keep pressing on. Well, we seem to have run out of water on our amazing downwind as you can see I'm all the way up on the bow to get my skeg up in a little bit but it's grabbing I never a dull moment And things have gone from bad to worse. I am now on the Ganger Death March without a fly rod in my hand and no bonefish to be seen. Hopefully we get a little bit deeper water. We're in ankle deep. Skeg is dragging. I'm pulling big red. Leaving Graveyard Creek. Our oasis in the middle of the night last night. Say hi to mom. What's going on? Oh, I'm on camera. I better look handsome. Okay, don't come over here. It's really skinny. Welcome to the Shark River, the mouth of the Shark River. It's a little after eight. Peak low tide was at 647, I believe. Something big splashed. And Usually about takes two hours for the tide to stop and start running in. So you can see how much water flows out of here. It's four foot, three foot, four foot, four foot of water in this much area in six hours. A whole lot of water so still got a little bit of outgoing it's not bad it's easy to paddle against 
But once the tide starts flowing in, I'll be going with it for six hours. So, welcome to Thursday edition of the Everglades Challenge. We're in the Shark River, waiting for the tide to turn. Well, not waiting, but it's the end of the outgoing. Incoming should be soon. And that's what I'm waiting on. Give me a little push, but feeling good. It's a little after eight o'clock in the morning. So I didn't get into Shark River last year until the afternoon. I didn't get into Flamingo until midnight. My goal is hopefully a lot sooner than that. We'll see what the wind is like. Yesterday was atrocious. So when we got into Chaco, hooked up with Jamie on an OC1, and he wasn't super familiar with how to get out of Chaco. And so we pushed out of Chaco. Essentially, I was the guide service for the outgoing tide. It was slow going because it was dark as hell and frustrating because he knows one speed and that's go fast. Um, but to get our bearings and everything, we left at midnight, pushed out, and didn't get real far, uh, but it was flat calm overnight. And we made it down to Mormon Key by, I don't even know what time that was, seven o'clock? eight o'clock um saw scott leaving mormon key which was so funny of this vast area of the everglades run into somebody that you actually know anyway we took a about an hour nap two hour break and then started heading and somebody put money in the wind machine and every crossing was just unbelievable so if you're wondering where Jamie is now we actually pushed in last night to graveyard campground and we got in there about 11 o'clock set up camp snoozed and got up at first light so we could make our way to the mouth and catch that incoming well somewhere in the crossing he went his own way and that's cool he hung with me all day yesterday and that was very much appreciated. I know I slowed him down, but I had a little bit of the knowledge and he had all the speed. But if you don't know exactly where you're going, you can eventually get there. But anyway, it was a good morale boost for both of us. We laughed a whole bunch, and I hope he knows his way through here. Man, this tide is still dropping. So anyway, Shark River. Pushing into Flamingo. Feeling good. And we'll update you at Flamingo. Peace! 
That's just a lot of smoke. I smell it. Brush fire. With these winds. Oh. And this section's gonna suck. Hey, we've made it to the mouth of Joe. Joe who? Joe Mama. Joe River. Um, got another half mile slog upwind and then hang a right and I will be in the river. And hopefully the tide's coming in. Give me a good little push and just grind it out. Keep grinding, grinding, grinding. Inches make miles. Thank you, Josh. So we're gonna keep on grinding and flamingo this afternoon. Checkpoint, one, two, three. Peace, feeling awesome! <laughs> Losing my shit. Hey, how you doing? This is uh, Chesapeake Tea Jam. And we're here to promote the Chesapeake Tea Jam all body weight loss reduction. So first of all, you need a paddle board and a paddle. Then do something stupid like sign up for the Everglades Challenge on a paddle board, right? And then you just paddle, 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 paddle every damn day it doesn't matter if it's windy it doesn't matter if it's dark you just paddle and you don't eat much because you're paddling so you're losing weight you're working on your guns and when you're done you're gonna be rip roaring shredded machine look at this yeah the gun show woo 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 <laughs> Joe River Chicky, the place where I am going to eat lunch. Cool spot, tucked on in. I imagine in the evening you would definitely need a thermocell or 10. Um, but sheltered for most of the wind, at least on three sides. And you even get a shitter. I don't know if I would necessarily ever use that, but the last time I was camping in the Everglades and stayed on Chickies was after a hurricane, or actually a government shutdown. Ooh, that hurts. Ooh, a nice scratch. Keep scratching, yeah. Anyway, so apparently the winds haven't killed me, the sharks haven't killed me, the pythons haven't killed me. I still have to run the gauntlet of the crocodiles. So now they're trying to asphyxiate me in smoke. What? You can't stop me. Reperiovium. Noi desiste. Peace! Feeling great! You gotta go in there? Yup. Uh. Welcome to the canal leading into Flamingo. And this is what I did last year at around 11 o'clock at night or 11.30.
creepy as hell. Into Flamingo before dark. Nobody's here. No welcome committee. Nobody. It's like vacant. Oh well, I'm here. Day seven. This is for it. Getting ready to enter crocodile drag over. Wind laid down last night enabled me to get out here. Even though I had issues this morning. An hour and a half sleep, if that. I was a little delirious. Couldn't really focus, couldn't find my legs, but here I am. So, when you're exhausted and you're not paying attention and you miss the channel by about half a mile, you have to do a little push pulling through Florida Bay. Thankfully, it's high tide. My baby mangrove. Hi, baby mangrove. And baby mangrove. And baby mangrove. So, you gotta pay attention. That mangrove, six inches of water. Those baby mangroves, six inches of water. This, what? 30 feet is the channel. That whole flat could have been much worse. On this episode of Alone, You're dropped off on a abandoned mangrove island in the middle of Florida Bay. You have a paddleboard. But with fierce headwinds, it's unlikely you'll get off. How will you survive? Giving up on part key, I can't, I can't make any headway. So, I'm heading south. That's Manatee Key in front of me. I'm gonna go on the back side of that, get some shelter. Rejuvenate, relax, 
rehydrate, refocus, and hopefully the winds drop off tonight and make a push in. But I converted into a kayak paddle. That's the only thing that got me as close as I did. It was a 3.8 mile jump. And after an hour of just grueling feeding, I was still 2.8 miles away. So, at the end of the world, I'm gonna go tuck in. So this is Manatee Key. It's also my like plan F in how to get to Key Largo. Anyway, recap the last, I don't know, 24 hours. So this time yesterday, I was battling the winds at the bottom of Whitewater Bay in the Everglades, which were absolutely brutal. Compounded by being smoked out by a huge, I don't know if it was a controlled burn or a wildfire. Anyway. So, I was hoping to be into Flamingo by four o'clock yesterday. But obviously that didn't happen. I got in the Flamingo just a little bit before seven o'clock. And by the time I got all my gear, moved over to the ramp, I had to repair my board. It was close to nine o'clock when I laid down. Couldn't really sleep and probably 10 o'clock I think I finally fell asleep. At 11.30 one of the kayak guys came over to get Godzilla. Jamie. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jamie. Because um, they were going to push off at midnight. Because the wind came down. Well, that piqued my interest. I thought I was rested up enough. And I wound up leaving Flamingo a little after one o'clock. And in honesty, that wasn't wise. I was exhausted still. And wound up wandering around in the dark, maybe getting two miles an hour. But, at first light, I was where my Everglades challenge ended last year. So I could start fresh. And I made it through Crocodile Drag Over. Went up through Madeira Bay. And at the end of Madeira Bay, I was greeted by a big punch in the face. The wind had cranked up and this was eight o'clock. Made my way over to Black Betsy Islands. And actually took an hour, a little over an hour nap. And then got an idea to tape my paddles together and make a kayak paddle since I've been kneeling 
and but for the past three and a half hours I've been trying to well three hours or so trying to get to Park Keys upland 4.4 miles and didn't make it so I diverted south which was actually kind of easy and here we are at Manatee Key I'm hoping there's enough water on this through pass I can actually see buildings on land I am close Perio Viam Noe Desiste Darn it 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 Cool little shark Hi Mr. Shark This is cool. And I got the tie. But it's pulling me into the skinny. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Let me get this. <laughs> 
Wow. Wow. Well done, Mike. Three Thank years. you, Paula. Third time's a charm. <laughs> I got that paddle and that tooth. Thank you. I'm a sticky boy. I know I just got a microphone.